Hello there, this is gonna be my um, very awkward and long drawn out coming out story. So before I would like to start this, although I'm just going to say that I'm gay for the purpose of society and for you, not you specifically, just you as in like, you all, whoever is watching this, um, to be able to understand this, but I don't really think of sexual orientation as like gay and straight. It's not as rigid as people say it is and really the labels only exist for other people to be able to classify people and put them in little boxes. And like it's the same thing with race. Race actually doesn't exist. It just is a made up social fabric to make society black and white, literally and metaphorically. It's a very complicated subject and situation and it's different for everybody. The reason why I'm making this video is basically to share my story and to help other people. I don't know if this could help somebody out there, it might, and I'm going to hope that it does, or just for some laughs because my life is just an awkward disaster and it's just good to, I don't know, make fun of it. I guess I'm just gonna start with like growing up and just everything. Elementary school, growing up as a little kid, I never really had like sexual thoughts about anything. All through elementary school, you know, I never thought I was gay, I never thought I was straight, I never really thought about any of that stuff. I knew that, you know, guys dated girls, you know, that's what was like normal. And then the sixth grade hit and I started to get some feelings for people of the same gender and, you know, I didn't really know how to mentally process that. So what I mostly did was I kind of just like shut it out of my head and kind of like, like I knew they were there, but I literally didn't acknowledge that they were there. I would be like, no, these thoughts aren't real. And it was almost like a, like a dream state when I would get like a crush on another guy. I'd just be like, nope, it's not real. I just kind of like wiped the eraser board in my head like clean. And it was just this mental war that went on in my head like 24 seven. The word gay having such like a negative connotation to it. It was something that I really, really did not want to be, you know, at then or growing up or at any stage of my life. I got this feedback from the world that being gay is bad. Like there's just such a negative mental thing going on because of that word that I just did literally didn't accept myself for it. <sighs> Seventh grade was like more of the same stuff for me, you know, still had these feelings, still had these thoughts, you know, still didn't accept them. Eighth grade, um, basically like the same thing. I started to like hate myself a little bit though, more than in previous grades because like I would hear myself talk and I would realize that I sounded slightly gay when I talked and I would hate that about myself. So I would try to talk as little as I possibly could, which made me hate myself even more and just it was just really I was just really messed up in the head um and then ninth grade came and nothing really changed um some other people started to come out which I didn't really like associate myself with them but I didn't really like hate them because it's always the people that you know hate the gays that are gay like, looking back at it I knew of several people that were openly gay but um they were all really like flamboyant and I was afraid that if I told people that I like liked guys then that I would have to somehow start acting like that or I would be expected to act like that or you know everybody wouldn't be my friend and all I would have was gay friends and my life would be like flipped upside down so I still never did any I never said anything about it I never accepted it in my head I just kind of like tucked it under the rug and I remember one time somebody asked me in ninth grade if I was gay and I got so mad at that because I still wasn't even accepting it in my own head and I was spending so much time and energy trying to push it out of my own head the thought that somebody else could just bring it up just ripped it all out what I was trying to hide and it just got me so angry. I had this one friend that I told, well at first he told me that he was bisexual and I was like <laughs> okay and he was like yeah sometimes you think about girls sometimes you think about guys and then he's like so what are you? I was like I think I am too. Like I was like yeah sometimes I think about girls sometimes I think about guys which in my head I was mostly thinking about guys but I wasn't really acknowledging that. I just for some reason I just didn't want to accept it. I told him and he was like the only person that knew for a while. So like going into 10th grade, I mean, that friend knew. All of 10th grade, I didn't really do anything else with it. You know, still mental war in my head. By the end of 11th grade, I probably told like an, a one, like one other person. I think like an internet person. I can't remember who it is. And then 12th grade came, senior year. That was last year. So like 2011, 2012. Um, and I was still not dealing with it in my head. Um, I wouldn't like accept it at all. I wouldn't acknowledge it. I don't know if this was 100% relating to that, it probably wasn't, but a portion of it was from it. Um, I started to get really, really bad anxiety, and I'd get anxiety attacks sometimes, and I would like break down crying a, f a few times in school that happened. 
I would start to get really bad depression where it would like ruin big, big chunks of my day. And um, I would have these like bipolar days where I would be like, I'm so happy. And then like, I would just randomly think about, oh wait, maybe I'm gay. And then I would just crash instantly and I would just be depressed for hours. And it was just this constant up and down. It just really, really, really messed with my head. Like later into senior year and over the summer of last year, I started, you know, coming out to myself I think you know it's it's weird to say that because you know I always knew that I was but like at the same time I didn't because I didn't let it happen in my brain so I started you know just thinking I was just like okay I started becoming more and more okay with the fact that I would be gay you know whatever that means then I went to college or university it was actually a university but we just call it college um I went there and I met two friends at the beginning of the year at this orientation thing. One of them had a sister who had a roommate who was gay and he was, you know, he was really cool. And when I first met him, you know, his friends started talking about how he has like these psychic powers and how he can read people's auras and he can talk to ghosts and can tell you things about you that he shouldn't know. And then he told me about how like he can tell if people are gay, you know, right away. Like he doesn't even have to know them or he doesn't even have to hear them talk or he doesn't even have to see them. And then I'm just thinking to myself, wow, he probably knows that I am and I haven't accepted it yet and that everything about me and all my problems and he knows all of them. And so the fact that he knew all that made me kind of really uncomfortable and kind of freaked out that, you know, other people could know. The fact that other people knew and that I didn't even accept it in myself. It was just this really double, I just, I just hated that situation. Um, then October came and, um, this one guy started messaging me on Facebook and you know I was just talking back and then like he just asked one day he's like not to be rude or not to offend you but are you gay and then I just kind of like sat there for like like 20 minutes and just thought to myself I was like you know I don't want to lie to him and I don't want to like, not be myself so you know I told him that I was like yeah maybe I'm like bisexual I think and you know he told me about how he was recently coming out to all of his friends and I was like oh you know he's gay too of course and then you know we started hanging out more and you know we may or may not have cuddled a few times and we may have done other things you know I haven't even accepted it in myself and you know I'm just doing stuff with other guys okay so then like November hits still hardly anybody knows I was starting to accept it in myself a lot more to the point where you know, I could think thoughts. I'd be like, okay, maybe I like guys, you know, in my head. I felt okay with it. Throughout November, I told like probably three or more, three or four more friends over text message. And then I told, officially, I told the guy who is like psychic and could read your mind and all this other stuff. I officially told him, um, I remember it was Black Friday. And so that kind of was like a symbolic thing for me, I think, again, because I knew that he already knew, but I was just like, I just need to tell him to where I can be honest with myself to a person that already knows. Then... December hits and I start working on vlog a day 2013 stuff more and you know I start meeting tons and tons and tons and tons of youtubers and you know a couple of them happen to be gay and I was like you know I don't, it's like whatever and then I realized that I start kind of like melting into this friend group of gay youtubers and I didn't even mean to um some of them were like Brad Sohood, David Out, um, Mike Rizzy, Grants in Your Pants, he used to be I Want Acceptance though um like Beef Twerky, Jake Bell like I started just like becoming friends with them and the thing was that they all just assumed that I was gay and at that point I still had not told anybody and I still didn't even 100% accept it in myself and so it was kind of comforting to where you know I had this group of friends that I knew you know treat me like a friend no matter what but at the same time I felt uncomfortable that they all knew and other people didn't know so I just kind of felt like I was like Hannah Montana in these two worlds I just have to thank them the people who I mentioned before because they probably helped in the process of me accepting myself more. So that's pretty cool. January hits. Um, I had the tendency to um, sometimes reblog pictures of guys on Tumblr, and um, sometimes people would ask me, are you gay? And then sometimes I'd be like really frustrated and I'd just delete the question. But one of the times I actually just answered it, I was like, yeah, I think, you know, I like guys and it's like whatever. And I made it a public answer so everybody on Tumblr could see it. So I, I mean, I just kind of put it out there and, and then at that point, I literally didn't know who knew that I was because, you know, I told about probably 10 or so friends, you know, this handful of people and I didn't know who they told. And then I told Tumblr and I didn't know who Tumblr told because it's once it's on Tumblr, it's like, I don't know. So I really, I didn't know who knew for a while. Like I was somewhat out kind of. February 
kind of came and went, you know, same old thing. Um, but then here's the exciting part of the story that's starting to come up. March hits and, you know, it's spring break. My friend wanted to go on a road trip somewhere and, you know, I wanted to go to Fort Wayne, which is a few hours away from where I live, to um, see Andrea Russett because we're kind of like BFFs, you know, not really, but she knows who I am. She has like a radio show on Saturday, so like the Saturday before I planned to go there, I called in and I was like, yo, I'll be in you know, Fort Wayne the next Saturday. And she's like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, I'm going somewhere during the day, but I'll be back at night. And so the next Saturday, you know, we're heading in there, and I tried calling into a radio station for an hour and a half, and apparently the phones were broken. And then, you know, after like another hour, I finally call in, and I told her how I was in Fort Wayne, but the phone got disconnected after like five seconds. <laughs> so that was really frustrating. But also, I knew that Grant, um the YouTube grants in your pants, but I knew that he lived near Fort Wayne, so I was like, hey, you know, you should come hang out with us too, because Andrea will be there, I'll be there, so we were going to be the th meet at the mall, we were at the mall for a while, like, my friend and I were, and then, um, Grant shows up, I just kind of hung out with him for a while, and we both tried to get Andrea to, um, answer her tweets, like, we kept tweeting at her, and I kept direct messaging her, and I was like, yo, I'm in Fort Wayne, you know, did you want to hang out, but I think she had, like, a migraine that day, or she, I don't know what happened, where she was just having a bad day or something, so she ended up not being able to hang out with us. So it was just me and Grant and my friend. And, you know, the longer that I hung out with Grant, you know, it was just kind of like, you know, just like that feeling, just like the feels were just there, and I kind of started to like him. And uh, by the end of the day, we are like eating dinner at this place, and then, you know, when we left, I didn't get to spend too long with him, but then when we had to like part ways, I got you know, really sad, and then I texted him, and I was like, I wanted to kiss you when we left, and he's like, that would have been perfect, and you know, we just started texting, and texting, and texting, and texting, and by the next Friday, we were in a relationship. I have another YouTube friend, Brad, from Minnesota, who, he's dating this guy who goes to Michigan State. The school that I go to is, like, near there, and where Grant lives is near there, and so the week before, you know, we were all Skyping, Brad's boyfriend was like, oh yeah, we're having a St. Patrick's Day party, you know, um, you should come, and it'll be really awesome, you know, Grant should come too, and this was before I had officially met Grant. The entire time that I was with Grant, I, the first time, I knew that I would be seeing him the next weekend, and by the time that we, like, met the second weekend, the St. Patrick's Day weekend, um, it was pretty awesome you know I hung out with him for like two whole days and it was like the best two days ever you know we obviously tweeted a lot tweets like I never really directly said I was in a relationship with him online but there was this one time during when we were like together that weekend where Grant was using my chapstick and then I told him oh it's like we're indirectly kissing and so he put that tweet on Twitter and took a picture of him holding the chapstick and then I favorited that tweet and my one friend from high school who has a friend she apparently found the tweet on my favorites or something and told my friend from high school who the next day so this was like the Sunday after actually this was St. Patrick's Day who the next day she you know texted me and she's like what is this what is this all about OMG OMG and I was like oh yeah that's my boyfriend so then I kind of came out to her then you know Monday came and went still nothing you know just the same old same old then Tuesday came and a different friend that I had from high school who's currently in high school right now um she texted me and said that this one girl who texted me that I told you know Grant was my boyfriend she went around telling everybody in my high school that I had a boyfriend and I wasn't really planning on that but then you know the amount of people that she told was a little bit more than I thought that she told and you know I'm not mad at her or anything because it was kind of inevitable of it getting out and so what I was thinking is that you know I needed to tell my sister because she was still in high school and I didn't want her to hear it from somebody else that I have a boyfriend and that would just be really disrespectful of me and really rude. This was Tuesday. I texted my sister and I was like, hi, um, this is really random, but um, I have a boyfriend. Okay. And then she like literally didn't believe me for like half an hour. I was like texting her. I was like, yeah, this is, this is true. This is like a true thing. And then she was like feeling nauseous and she's like, she's like, she's like all these texts, like all this stuff that I was just like, I don't really want to be causing all this right now. You know, you're gonna have to tell our parents really, really soon, because like, I don't know how long I can keep this secret in. I was like, okay, I'll probably just tell them tonight. So that night, I set up my camera, and I called them, and I recorded the conversation, and I told them that I had a boyfriend, and you know, they were, they were cool about it. They were just like, 
oh, you know, we kind of suspected it. And I was like, yeah, of course. And, I mean, they were pretty cool about it. The phone, the conversation lasted about, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And, you know, it was, it was okay. And then that night, I uploaded the video to YouTube, entitled it, Coming Out Live to My Parents on the Phone. And um, it got about, like, 300 views overnight, and it got a bajillion comments on it that were all amazingly positive and then I started getting all these text messages from people that saw it that were just like I love you OMG you know I'm so proud of you and then I started getting you know tumblr things I started getting tweets and I'm just like oh my god I can't deal with all this attention like it was really really positive attention but it was just like it was really overwhelming and I almost felt like I didn't deserve it because I felt like you know straight people never get this they never get a day where everybody says that they love and support them I felt like really loved but at the same time I I felt like I didn't deserve it, which I don't know. I always feel like that about a lot of things. So then that night, I didn't end up sleeping because I was typing this paper about China. And so I was still awake at 6 a.m. the next morning, and my dad texted me, and he's like, check Facebook. So I checked Facebook, and there was a message from him saying that I needed to take the video down because, you know, it's a private family matter. And... Then I tried explaining to him that, you know, I put it up there to help other people and that I wanted other people to feel like they could have something to relate to and just, I just wanted to help people. That's basically what I'm doing now too. I just wanted to help people by it. And then he just keeps just bashing his opinion in my face about how I, they think that I betrayed them and that I shouldn't have put the video up. And I just start literally having the worst mental breakdown that I've ever had in my life. I literally went into the bathroom um, that's in the basement of my residence hall. I laid down on the floor and I cried for over an hour at the thought of taking that video down because I literally felt like I was being put into jail and I felt like they were just using the video as an excuse to not accept me like oh like literally every emotion that I had I like physically felt I started like heaving and I thought I was gonna throw up I started biting my arm which I don't know why I wanted to shave my head like literally I almost went upstairs to my room and got my like hair trimmer and I started just shaving my head right there in the bathroom and then like an hour and a half later I'm like what am I doing with my life I you know it was like seven in the morning I hadn't slept yet I'm laying on the floor of a bathroom crying about my life and I'm just like you know what I'm not gonna cry about this anymore my dad just keeps texting me he's like take the video down take the video down and my mom just keeps telling me to take the video down and then I just keep getting text messages from all of my friends saying how they loved me and supported me and then I kept telling them how my parents are telling me to take the video down and they're just they're all asking me why and I'm just like I don't know and it was just literally the most emotional day of my life and I tried to call my dad that night and I started crying again I couldn't talk and I cried for like another hour and then I still would not take the video down because I'm a stubborn little boy. And then my dad starts texting me. He's like, we need your help. This is a bad situation. Stuff is happening. OMG. Like, I literally, he made it sound like the FBI was at our house. And, like, there was, like, a helicopter raid. Like, and I'm like, we're going to die. And it was just because some of my friends started sharing the video. Eventually, I cried some more, you know. And then I made the videos um, unlisted. That was like that for, like, two days. And then my dad was, like, still freaking out about it and um, he made me make them completely private, but I hope in the future that I might be able to put them back up. I don't know when it'll be, or any single response or anything that I've gotten from this whole situation of coming out has been completely and 100% positive, which I know I'm really lucky for that, but at the same time, that's the way it should be. Sexual orientation literally is not even a big deal. Like, it's just, people just make it a big deal and it's just dumb. You can't pray away the gay. It's it's what you are. It's like it's like if you were born black and you're like, oh, I don't want my baby to be black. I gotta pray away the black. Like it just doesn't. That's not how it works. If there was anything that you would take out of this, if you wanted to record yourself coming out to your parents, um, you should probably tell them before you upload it to the internet. Otherwise, you could cause a whole bunch of drama. I mean, I'm here if anybody wants to talk about anything because I've gotten to a point where I'm just like, I don't even care. It's like, it's not that big of a deal, really. That was basically my coming out story. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.